inside chimneys, on tree limbs, garages, support beams, and attics. You can find their nests everywhere around the house. They're not only going to ruin your picnic and mess with your food, or try to sting you if you make them angry, but they'll look for sheltered areas in your backyard to build a nest, most commonly in the ceiling of the covered outdoor porch. The important thing is to find a place that can support the weight of their home and the entire community. This is what paper wasps like to do, a group among 30,000 different wasp species. You can recognize them by the way they build their nests. The queen wasp starts building the first structure on her own. The males add on to it later. When you see a larger group of wasps flying in a similar direction, follow them. They leave their nest a couple of times a day to gather food, but they always go back to take care of their young and their queen. Also, they're buzzing pretty loudly while building a nest, so... Oh, there it is! Let's take a closer look at their nest and check what's inside. They're mostly umbrella-shaped, made of grey, papery material. Wasps build it out of pulp or saliva. Their nests can get pretty big. The biggest wasp nest found was 18 feet across and 12 feet long. Paper wasps build smaller nests, while hornets, another wasp species, create bigger ones shaped like a football. The outer part is the hardest. Cells there are wider and denser. The root is the foundation the whole nest is built off of. Inside, you can see cells. It's where the larvae are. Wasps are similar to butterflies. They're part of a special group of insects that go through a metamorphosis, a process where an animal's body changes when becoming an adult. These cells are actually cribs for younger wasps that are about to grow up. As wasps build nests, they leave these cells open. The queens are in charge. They lay the eggs in these cells and seal them off. Cells look like hollow cylinders. They form some sort of hexagon, which holds the other cells. Inside the nest, everything's compact so that many of these cells can fit in a very tight space and still have an incredibly strong structure. Cells are the crib and the cocoon at the same time. Their size is big enough to fit the larvae together with its roommates. Grown-up wasps often leave some food with the egg, so the young, after it hatches, has the meal served. You can see the drones, which are male wasps, circle around from cell to cell. They want to make sure everything's okay and each larva has enough food. Nests need to be at a stable temperature with high humidity because of larvae. That's why wasps are working hard to insulate the nest. Such nests mostly have domes built of plant material, saliva, or paper. A wasp is roaming around, looking for the proper material. When it finds wood, it chews it up, mixing it with saliva. This way, the wasp makes the strong glue and lays it in thin layers. But layers need to be dense to make the entire nest stronger and sturdier. Ta-da! The core is done! The queen then wraps the nest in some sort of an envelope. Light, thin sheets made of macerated pulp. It protects the cells inside and limits the entrance, so you can only go inside through one tiny hole. This way, they can easily maintain the internal humidity and temperature. If you're looking for honey, the wrong hive. Bees have it, not wasps. They mostly have black and yellow bodies, although wasps come in many different colors like blue, orange, green, red. Wasps and bees are almost the same size. Bees are chunkier and have more hair. Wasps are thinner and smoother. They have a waist and a narrow petiole. They both pollinate flowers, even though wasps do it a little bit less than bees because they don't have so much fine hair on their bodies, so the pollen can't stick to it. Bees farm nectar to produce honey, which is the food of their larvae. Wasps are way more aggressive. They eat meat, which means they bring other insects and bugs for their young or their remains. Wasps identify each other by scent, but also, just like we do, by unique facial patterns. They are the first case where scientists discovered animals identifying faces the way humans do. Queens recognize other queens, and they're constantly battling to set up a hierarchy in the colony. That means each wasp knows who's in charge of work or food distribution, and who's there to bring the new larvae into this world. Wasps have a rich social life, so they need to memorize lots of faces and also distinguish wasps that live in their nest from those that don't. Wasps are useful for humans because they eat insects, and by that, control the population of bugs that destroy crops. Wasps put so much effort to build their nests, and still, they only last when it's warm outside. They start building it from spring and live there until fall. The worker wasps don't survive cold winters. Only some queens do because they have something similar to antifreeze in their blood. They're in charge of creating a new life for the new nest the next year. 
When a wasp colony is gone, some other species use their nests, like hoverflies. They look similar to wasps, but they survive winter. Just like wasp queens, hoverflies hibernate in sheltered places with a nice temperature. So abandoned wasp nests seem perfect. Hornets even come to active nests when wasps are still there and feed on debris. They don't even get stung. Only female wasps can sting, and they do it when defending themselves. A wasp queen can live up to a year, and worker wasps up to 22 days. Paper wasp colonies are mostly small. They have 100 to 200 cells and up to 100 adults. Some bigger nests will have 400 cells, but yellow jackets build super nests you really want to stay away from. They have up to 15,000 worker wasps. Don't look up in tree canopies or outside of the house to find their nests. Instead, look within your walls or down so you don't stomp on them because they build underground nests. Even though they're smaller than other wasp species, they're way more aggressive. Yellow jackets have strong instincts when it comes to protecting the nest, so they'll get mad if you violate their peace and try to sting you multiple times. They can do it, unlike bees that can only sting once. Bees will jab their barbed stingers into your skin, and that's also a part that holds their nerves, muscles, and digestive tract. That's why a bee can't survive losing a barbed stinger. Yellow jackets don't lose anything. Running away won't help, they'll follow you for several hundred feet if necessary. If you're near the water, don't dive in, because they'll patiently wait for you to run out of breath and go back to the surface. Let's walk into their nest. It's probably a hole in the ground because they mostly find some abandoned burrows. They use clay or mud to give it a firmer structure. One opening will take you beneath the surface, into their fascinating underground city with thousands of others, ready to defend their home and aggressively drive intruders away. These super nests can develop when winters are mild and there's a lot of food. For example, your pet's food or garbage. This way, more insects will survive the cold winter months. Then, some workers survive and continue with all operations in the nest, which only gets bigger and bigger. Such huge nests often have multiple queens. The bigger the nest is, the busier they are, so they're more likely to leave you alone even if you're somewhere around. Oh look, it's raining! They don't mind that much. During the hot summer days, they need water to hydrate anyway. If the rain gets too excessive though, it will drive them outside. Many wasp species are social, but there are solitary wasps too. They don't have a social organization. Each female builds its own nest and takes care of it. They mostly nest in the ground, but you can find them in rotten wood or hollow plant stems. A queen wasp can even find beetle tunnels in dead wood and make them her home. They feed on nectar, and you can often see them around flowers, preying on spiders or insects to feed their young.